टुडे वी हैव विद अस कल्पेन पारेक सर एमडी एंड सीईओ एट डीएसपी म्यूचुअल फंड सर हैज गॉट ओवर 3 डेकेड्स ऑफ एक्सपीरियंस एंड हिज प्राइम फोकस इज ऑन इन्वेस्टमेंट मैनेजमेंट फ्रॉम लास्ट 2 डेकेड्स ही हैज बीन अ स्टूडेंट ऑफ प्रिंसिपल्स ऑफ लॉन्ग टर्म इन्वेस्टिंग and he is a firm believer that behavior and evidence based investing are a source to alpha and by education sir is a uh, bachelor's in education in chemical engineering and sir had done uh, mba in finance and if i'm not mistaken sir had started his career with uh, prudential icci amc so a very warm welcome sir and just in case i missed anything on the introduction i would request you to suffice that uh, in the opening note and sir uh, please uh, club one question with your introduction in the sense like uh, are you the first one in the family to uh, start in the financial markets or you also got some uh, legacy or history in the family which has helped you in your journey sir sure so i don't think you deleted anything from my introduction first of all thanks for inviting me and good evening to everyone you've actually added to my introduction you've added a decade longer than uh, what i have worked for i have worked for around 24 years you said three decades um, and the last uh, few years are actually like decades because in in 3 4 years we've seen things that normally happen in a decade and um, from a family point of view i think i belong to a family of uh, professionals um my father and mother both worked till the age of uh, 66 67 they retired and uh, their only exposure to capital markets was uh, whatever random investing they would have done in uh, some stocks here and there or uh, you know some mutual funds which are available in the year uh, 1980s or 90s but um, uh, not uh, uh, in the professional manner in which investing is done today because today the whole landscape for uh, mutual funds has changed with uh, with a very large network of professional advisors available to guide and uh, help investors so yeah that's my background great sir so sir if i would request you to tell about your experience starting from your uh, uh, af- just after your mba in the year 1998 uh, there were different phases in the market various black swan events so how your journey uh, has evolved over a period of time and broadly like what has uh, remained the same in the market and what broad changes you have seen in the market in last uh, two and a half decades sure so prince i um, did my engineering and uh, i worked as an engineer for an uh, for a year or so and um, i realized that um, those were the days when uh, you know chemical engineering was not uh, very fashionable so when i joined engineering in 91 chemical industry was booming and that's why my father told me that you need to be in this uh, field and i was an obedient son so even though i wanted to do arts and history but i followed what he told me and by the time i passed out the cycle was almost over in 95 96 and uh, that was a time when uh, electronics and computer science uh, like it is today uh became suddenly very popular and uh, most of my friends uh, went to us for their masters in electronics and computers and uh, i stayed back after a year i realized uh, i'm not very good with machines so to run away from uh, my engineering job i uh, uh, enrolled for an mba program in uh, 98 i passed out a very stroke uh, uh, you know very random stroke of uh, Uh, accident where uh, in my interview i just got picked up by uh, lnt finance uh, for a role in the treasury team where uh, in my early um, you know 6 months or 9 months my job was to invest in uh, government bonds and uh, uh, borrow money and then invest in government bonds as well as invest in um, debt mutual funds and in those days uh, interest rates were around uh, 13 to 14% in india and um, uh, when when you get 14% in just uh, you know owning a government of india bond the need to uh, take uh, equity investing risk uh, was obviously uh, very minimal so equity investing was not as uh, uh, fashionable as it is today uh, in those days uh, it was a bad word in those days talking about equity mutual fund was not um, uh, very fashionable and uh, people thought it is uh, a casino it is risky uh, regulatory frameworks were not as transparent as tight as they are today Uh, money in markets was not safe there were operators there were scamsters 
um, there were people with insider information, you know, a, as an edge uh, who could make money at the cost of the common investor. The retail investor was not as empowered as uh, he is today in terms of uh, information and, uh, you know, a very clean regulatory setup. So uh, uh, in 98-99, uh, you know, whatever investments uh, I had done along with uh, some basic homework with a few of my colleagues uh, in government bonds, uh, that started doing very well because interest rates started to come down. RBI started liberalizing interest rates. So, uh, you know, over the next two, three years, uh, the treasury portfolio earned around 18 to 19 percent return. And uh, those were three years also when, um, you know, I just started the fund. Uh, uh, I jo after the NNT, I moved into the fund industry in 99, 2000, the, the peak of the tech bubble uh, at that point in time, where some of the best um, uh, as well as the worst tech companies were at 100 times on earnings. And uh, then that bubble crashed in 2000, 2001. My first uh, brush with... Uh, losing money on a small scale, my own money as well as other people's money. And um, that was a time which coincided with bonds giving you 14 to 15% annual returns over the next three, four years. So, you know, when you see that contrast that between 2000 to 2004 or 2000 to 2003, a bear market in India in equities and a super bull market in government bonds, uh, bond yields dropped from 12, 13% all the way down to around uh, uh, 4.85. Even in this cycle, we didn't go to, you know, that level of uh, bond yields. Mm -hmm. So it was a very different setup. And it was a setup where uh, generally the belief was uh, stocks rally or make money temporarily. Whereas um, generally over a long period of time, uh, you don't make money in stocks. That was the type of uh, environment. From there to today, it has been the other extreme where today the belief is Permanently, you make money in stocks. Temporarily, you may uh, lose money in stocks. So that is the fundamental difference. And uh, uh, apart from that, uh, over over these 24 years, obviously, you know, like anyone who uh, just is there uh, at a point in time in an industry, you will obviously see various cycles. So I've seen the mega bull run of 2003 to 2007, when Nifty in four years went up by 700%. And uh, the small cap index went up by 1500% just in a matter of four years. So uh, many times, you know, after that, after 2008, uh, every time uh, a rally has started, you know, you know we, we always hear headlines and people uh, talk about um, comparing with that phase, that India is going back into that phase. Um, but, but, you know, I've realized that after 2008, that phase has never come. It, you know, narratives have come about we going back into that type of a bull run. But uh, experience has taught me not to get carried away with those type of stories, headlines or narratives. Um, I think there was only that one big bull market in those four years, at least in my career. After that, it has been two steps ahead, one step behind. You know, uh, uh, you make money in three, four years, you give it up in the next uh, two, three years of drawdowns or, or down cycles. So, so that has been the journey for me. I've seen uh, good times, bad times. Um, I've seen mediocre times getting positioned as great times and so on and so forth. So, yeah, that's uh, a very quick snapshot of these 24 years. So, Kalpen, sir, like how easy or difficult it was for you so as to switch from like uh, whenever we enter the market, see, uh, at that point in time, you were telling government bonds were doing good, right? So, uh, normally, when, when we make uh, some money or maybe see uh, some asset class making money, so definitely we got an inclination towards that asset class. And then afterwards, moving to another asset class is comparatively difficult. How had been your experience on that front, sir? Yeah, so I think, uh, see, that uh, desire to always invest in uh, what is yesterday's best performer uh, is, uh, I think, a permanent desire human beings will have. Uh, we are always attracted to yesterday's great returns. Uh, and for me also, you know, uh, it was the same pattern uh, for the first 8-10 years. The mindset was to always be in the asset class, which is doing very well in the last one or two or three years without asking that question that is this sustainable or what is the driver of return in the first place? For any asset class, there are certain drivers, right? That equity is the driver of return is um, profit growth rate plus or minus uh, valuation changes uh, plus dividend deal, for example. That's the formula. For bonds, it is uh, the coupon plus or minus change in interest rates. Um, so, so there is some template, which uh, probably I learned uh, only 10 years later. Uh, for the first 10 years, the template was, um, uh, what is headline telling you? Uh, what are uh, so-called experts telling you? What is the narrative? If everyone says India story is great, infrastructure story is great, uh, it means the story is great. Because the last one year was 
uh, taken as a validation of the fact that in the next one year also the same returns will come so that was naivety you know at its uh, best in the in the first 8 10 years of my uh, learning curve and switching uh, was uh, not as easy as today because today you can press few buttons on a mobile app and you know switch from one fund to another fund or one asset class to another asset class to a large extent but even in those days uh, technology had just started to come i, I remember 2005 6 7 in in my earlier organization we had launched our a uh, digital website so switching was not that difficult but we used to use uh, you know being in the fund industry you know having access to a uh, transaction uh, facility we could switch uh, relatively easy as as an employee uh, but for individuals it was not uh, that easy but this behavior of investing where uh, returns were already made and not where they are likely to be made uh, was as uh, prominent then as it is today so that is not changed Uh, right so well said so kalpen sir like uh, the to- topic which we cap for today's session investing is simple uh, we uh, have heard this and but when we experience that uh, it doesn't appear to be that simple in the sense like uh, especially the beginners right they take a considerable amount of time uh, uh, before uh, uh, finding out what actually they want to do or uh, the way they have to do so uh, what made you say investing is simple and how we complicate it sir you are right actually you brought a very uh, nice point that um, generally as uh, human beings uh, we take a lot of time procrastinating on where should i invest when should i invest uh, which fund should i invest in or which stock stock uh, let me not talk of stocks because you know it's a different dimension let me focus it on mutual funds um, we take probably sometimes 5 10 years to decide um, uh, you know that i want to start investing i say this to to lot of my you know family members um, uh, you know who know me for last 15 20 years in my on my in law side they are all business people or professionals and they have enough disposable savings to invest but every time they'll meet me they'll ask me market kya lagta hai but i ask them aap pooch kyu rahe ho aapka khud ka to paisa laga nahi hai your money is in gold or fixed deposit or bonds so why do you ask but it's it's like usual habit to ask so people procrastinate a lot before investing and actually once they invest after you know someone's advice or you know some friend's recommendation or uh, uh, or some input or the other the time devoted to that investment is far lesser um, so people uh, track uh, investments uh, far more frequently after investing uh, whereas uh, take a lot of time before investing and actually it should be the reverse because for compounding to work you have to give time you have to give decades not uh, you know weeks or months or years unfortunately uh, uh, unlike 25 years back today information is available uh, minute by minute it changes minute by minute opinions are available so loosely uh, so freely so frivolously on anything and everything and uh, you know uh, it only leads to um, confusion more taleb has said right that more info if you want to kill your enemy give him more data give him more information so we are today in a world where so much of information comes in so in that context it is simple if you want more information but Uh, we end up making it complex by chasing the wrong information by learning the wrong lessons and uh, you know stuff like that but for whom is it very easy so i i have seen uh, on the other hand enough uh, you know investors who may not be intellectually uh, most sound who are very focused on doing their jobs earning their salaries focusing on their careers you may, you may be a great engineer or a good doctor or a good coder uh, or uh, you know an entrepreneur and he says i am focused on this i don't know what's happening to markets um, Uh, i have been told that uh, i will make lot of money if i invest for the next uh, 10 15 20 years uh, i have started with um, four or five uh, mutual funds i have started with an sip i have an advisor who has guided me kaha invest karna hai so people who are simple in terms of taking such decisions generally they have profited a lot more than people who may have hundreds of crores but who react to multiple uh, inputs multiple people you know who respond every quarter to every new news flow uh, every new information so uh, so people who have chosen simplicity uh, tend to benefit a lot more such numbers are low you know the ratio of people who choose simplicity versus complexity obviously there is a bigger camp on the second side um, in my own family i'll, I'll give you a, a number you know uh, publicly i'm stating this that uh, my my sister lives in hong kong and you know she's focused on her family her kids and her job and uh, i started investing on her behalf uh, uh, in 2001 to uh, if i am not mistaken so almost 22 years now her uh, portfolio irr is far superior to my irr because uh, she has invested and she has forgotten and uh, uh, once in few years whenever she has some extra lump sum money she will tell me what do i need to do i will recommend a hybrid fund to her which is 70 equity 30 bonds uh, because it's slightly more conservative than a pure equity fund 
and uh, her returns are better than my returns in my case i have more information i have more people advising me every day uh, i myself at times take views and decisions you know talking to um, many market experts and uh, because of access there is always that temptation to uh, you know play cycle move in move out of certain styles or market caps so um, uh, i am um, cognizant of uh, you know this fact that uh, people who uh, invest and forget who invest right and then forget and let time uh, take its uh, play its role uh, i think um, we 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 think um, fund managers are genius fund houses are genius experts are genius but i think the best genius is time if you choose the right vehicle and then give it time uh, there is no magic uh, better than that um, we we sometimes um, uh, you know uh, make it too complex by chasing uh, every story every theme every new uh, idea and, uh, and and deviate from uh, the line in length yeah, so i think uh, simplicity what i mean is uh, uh, one uh, you know and and the rules are very simple that you know every month uh, um, after all the expenses which you have to incur uh, necessarily decide a savings amount uh, amount save that much money and give it um, you know at least 10 years and above and don't interfere or interrupt with that compounding and uh, where you need to invest there there is a choice uh, depending on your risk appetite you can choose uh, an equity fund with 100% in stocks you could choose a hybrid fund with uh, 75% in stocks you could choose one more uh, let's say conservative level with 50% stocks if you want choices are available the beauty of the fund industry is that there is a bouquet of choices available depending on what your risk appetite is you just need the right uh, you know guidance of uh, people who can uh, decide the fitment for you and then respect that fitment and um, you know devote enough time uh, if you devote enough time all problems are sorted yeah this reminds me of an example which you gave in one of your interviews sir where you quoted that uh, three decades uh, uh, cagr of one of the fund was 18 19% but there were hardly 90 people who benefit who reaped the whole benefit uh, by investing and staying for that long right sure uh, actually it was an example of uh, our oldest fund you know dsp is a fund house with now almost 27 years history and our first fund it was then called dsp equity fund now it's called dsp flexi cap fund uh, i i think uh, its nav would have gone up by some 95 times maybe in the last uh, 27 years uh, but um, at last count we had only 23 investors who have stayed for this whole tenor and some of them may have just stayed stayed put unintentionally without knowing that they had put some 5000 10000 rupees that time uh, and because the amount would have been so small they would have forg- forgotten or ignored um, so uh, it's not easy you know uh, uh, so many times i i have one uh, line in my you know personal notebook that what is my length of investing so some of the funds which i had invested in 98 99 uh, when i started my career because i was Uh, explained about investing from one of my college seniors she had come and explained and you know that was like the first investment i still have it to to try and uh, you know ensure that i can somewhere proudly claim that uh, this folio of mine is a 25 year old old folio but if i keep that aside i have myself made mistakes i have moved out in 3 years 5 years sometimes in 6 months in the first uh, 10 years of my career so this is very common you know we we all make these mistakes and uh, hopefully uh we learn and thanks to people like you we have uh, an opportunity to talk about our mistakes and hope uh, people make less mistakes and sir like uh, when we talk of mutual fund as an asset class so normally uh, if somebody start investing in the form of sip today so it will take uh, at least 2 3 or maybe 4 years so as to realize that uh, the needle is moving right but uh, in today's time the patience is a rare uh, thing which we see and if we talk about 10 12 years that is again a very big period so yeah. what would be your advice like how as a retail investor or uh, we we condition our behavior to our advantage in the sense like uh, and on the top of the when we have so many options in the mutual fund itself so deciding which one to go for is indeed a, a difficult task for a beginner so how one shall on that control. yeah so you know uh, i i was uh, being interviewed by one uh, digital platform where a lot of investors uh, you know invest directly and the questions were very basic like how do i decide which fund should i choose there are 900 schemes how do i you know choose debt fund equity fund hybrid fund which fund out so on and so forth so uh, my first comment is that uh, you know if if you cannot choose first of all if you don't know the reason why you're investing or how to choose 
don't choose uh, don't just do it because uh, someone is telling you to do it you first choose uh, you know an expert who can guide you so it's better to choose one or two experts or you know advisors or distributors that we call in our language mfds uh, who can choose on your behalf from this whole museum of thousand mutual fund schemes which are available because uh, it's better to choose two people who can guide you right rather than you know choose 25 30 schemes without having a framework of how to choose uh, that's my first comment um, uh, so so acknowledge and accept that if you can't choose it right um, take expert help take advice number one number two um, uh, you know i i don't think uh, you can teach someone how to be rich or how to learn investing because my belief is that it is only the minority which wins in the long term if you take the 700 crore population on earth there are very few people over over this you know history of uh, the last 200 years of market who uh, who have made wealth who have made money sustainably over long periods of time there are passengers who will come in one cycle some will migrate to the next cycle many will fall out then again in the next round a large chunk will come in some will stay more will fall out so the train will keep moving ahead but passengers will keep changing at various stations so there are very few who will stay through from the start uh, destination to the end destination now investors themselves have to take this fall there is data there is public literature everything is available which says that um, you know this is a game of uh, delayed gratification um uh, but by uh, natural evolution we are not wired for delayed gratification so the odds are very low i think um, uh, i i learned this sometime in 2008 or 9 when when someone taught me who i was working with that uh, the odds are very low for you to be a successful investor and if you want to be a successful investor you will have to behave like a minority and behavior of minority is difficult it means going against your instincts going against what your emotional um, you know uh, triggers every day or every few weeks would be and uh, it has to come gradually it's like exercise you keep working out you keep running you you know it's not going to happen um, uh, overnight so uh, which is why i feel uh, over time few people will uh, you know succeed in this game large pools will be average and equally large pools will be below average so each uh, individual has to ask that question that if i have to win in this game there is a short term route there is a long term route i uh, as a speaker today i don't have competence to you know uh, guide that uh, how to win in the short term route now because i don't know it doesn't mean uh, it cannot be done maybe there are ways to do it but i don't know how to do it um, uh, and i have learned the long term route uh, because maybe uh, survivorship bias i have succeeded over 20 years and hence uh, i feel that is the right route but i think uh, investors and individuals need to know that uh, that is uh, the odds are higher in that long term route Uh, and uh, there is no um, uh, other meaningful alternative uh, unless you are really uh, an expert so uh, i i don't have a sweet pill here to say that uh, um, you you want to remain greedy and earn money in the short term i don't have an answer to that uh, the only honest answer is uh, you you have no choice but to you know think long term and uh, keep uh, saving money keep accumulating units uh, uh, you know one big learning again you know someone in my career gave me is that uh, the beauty of a mutual fund and especially an sip investor is that in bull markets the navs will rise and in bear markets your number of units will rise um, so in bear markets don't feel disappointed looking at navs because they would be falling but at least if you are investing and your sips are continuing your unit accumulation is continuing so you you feel good that it is your units are rising cons- uh, consistently and then when the bull market starts again um, uh, you know uh, your navs will start uh, catching up again so i think this is the only formula uh, number of units into nav uh is is the simplest formula of uh, long term successful investing so true sir and and sir uh, i have an observation on the sense like uh, when it comes to seeking expert help uh, we uh, the majority obviously minority uh, i agree on that the majority is like they uh, <laughs> burn their fingers first and at a later point in time they either uh, don't invest or they seek expert help later so basically uh, the mfds right so logo yeah. ko sir kaun sa mutual fund lena hai wahi confusion aisa hota hai ki bhai when you are uh, seeking some financial or expert help yeah that the person's interest are aligned with your investing or not so how we can make that segregation up front when we do not have much experience in the market and uh, understanding on that so you know uh, i i'll tell you uh, uh, some very uh, simple thumb rule like first thing is to identify a good advisor and that like over time you uh, uh, identify who is a good valuer who is a good doctor in your life who 
you have trust and you keep going back it comes either through your own experience or it comes through your reference in in the area around which you are staying uh, and today thankfully lot of good advisors are um, you know uh, also present on social media who write about things who uh, share their views personally i look for uh, people who who are balanced uh, who 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 explain risk first rather than only talk of returns because uh, like you rightly said most people uh, enter uh, getting attracted at uh, returns but end up earning risk eventually um, you know wo return dikhta hai paper pe but actually when the real world road and rubber hit and market cycles turn you end up uh, uh, you know having very uh, risky outcome so you need to you know learn and and like i said that nothing comes easy like engineer banna hai to abhi 15 saal jo jana hai wo jana hai. i can't nothing can fast track that डॉक्टर बनना है तो यू नो यू हैव टू स्टडी फॉर अ सर्टन टेन और एटीन ट्वेंटी इयर्स सो द सेम इज गोइंग टू बी द जर्नी इन इन्वेस्टिंग यू मेक सम मिस्टेक्स यू लर्न फ्रॉम दोज मिस्टेक्स डोंट गिव अप बट यू नो सीक द राइट एडवाइस फर्स्ट एंड देर आर इनफ इफ यू आर सीरियस आई थिंक यू विल फाइंड द राइट एडवाइजर्स एंड द राइट एडवाइजर्स विल ऑल्सो फाइंड यू नंबर टू यू वॉन्ट टू ऑल्सो डू इट ऑन योर ओन एंड से दैट ओके आई वॉन्ट टू स्टार्ट थिंकिंग ऑन माई ओन again follow some basic uh, you know thumb rules uh, like i said um, uh, simple products make sense start with an index fund if you don't understand uh, which fund house to choose which fund manager to choose or start with a flexi cap fund uh, and have two three you know schemes uh, together uh, if you can't digest volatility which is going to come every 2 4 6 and 8 years uh, the the size of volatility changes every second year there is a 10% correction every fourth year there's a 20% correction every sixth year there's a 30% correction if you can't absorb that then blend some amount of another asset class um, uh, like gold or bonds in the portfolio typically in emerging market countries uh, you know generally interest rates have been high and you know gold as an asset class over the last 20 25 years at least has matched uh, local currency returns from stock markets also uh, in emerging markets at large so you know diversify portfolio don't start with uh, only the riskiest or, or rather the highest performing asset class blend portfolios and uh, you know start gradually and over time depending on your comfort zone uh, start um, uh, uh, increasing your um, uh, you know choice of funds choice of asset classes but one simple thumb rule is i i have learned it again like i said it took me 10 to 12 years to learn that uh, investment pass returns are poor not very high um, according to me uh, risk is much lower when the last three year returns of equity is uh, you know low or negative uh, risk is a lot high when the last three year returns are 20 30% cagr uh, the long term returns world over that equity markets have given um, on an average are 3 to 6% more than inflation um, so if inflation is going to be let's say 5 or 6% in india as it is in recent times uh, long term returns should be let's say around 10 to 12% uh, now if you are earning 30 35% uh, in in the last two three years Uh, obviously something will reset uh, and um, you know uh, these are not sustainable returns so uh, ret- uh, expectations have to be reasonable and uh, the approach to investing uh, one needs to know that today you are investing at a cycle high not at a cycle low today's return are 30% for that investor who invested in march 2020 when last one year return was minus 40% um, 10 year returns are around 18 to 19% in 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 many uh, mutual fund schemes today because in 2013 the last 5 year returns in equity was zero um a 20 year returns look superlative today because uh, in 2003 when you would have started again the last 5 6 year returns or last 10 year returns of of uh, market as a whole were zero 93 to 2003 was almost like a lost decade so know these uh, realities when past returns are high future returns will be low when past returns are low future returns are likely to be high so uh, today if, if if you know the setup is such that past returns look high and hence expected future returns could be moderate or low uh, take advantage of other asset classes today unlike 2 years back let's say today you want to keep some money in fixed income uh, also uh, bonds uh, give you you know 7 to 8% return 2 years back they were giving you only 4 to 5% return so you, there is reasonable compensation and let's assume equities give 10 to 12% in in this cycle uh, at least bonds are giving you that 8% uh, on on some part of your portfolio so there are techniques to think about asset classes and uh, you know mix and match and and th- there could be some investors who say that i don't care about intermittent fluctuations i have you know overcome that uh, volatility does not um, you know bother me um, uh, i'm okay to go through 3 4 years of uh, volatile returns but i want the highest return um, uh, asset class which is equity you can be 100% in equity provided you know that 
uh, when those uh, drawdowns or short term corrections happen you are not going to get out at the wrong time so i think uh, today availability of knowledge uh, is there today people have written books there are some very uh, uh, you know wise experienced um, uh, uh, experts who have written in a very simple language uh, how to invest how to choose funds uh, how to think about volatility how to think about asset allocation uh, i would say take that effort because that much is basic effort required to become a successful investor over a period of time उसके बिना जो भी मिलेगा वो रैंडमनेस से मिलेगा नसीब से मिलेगा on the expectations front you very rightly said sir the expectations has to be reasonable but uh, what majority of participant uh, even i come across when i meet in person and even on the social media i get a temperature check so people are talking most of the time they are talking about alpha and and you i mean i read that you believe that behavior and evidence based investing are source of alpha so can you please elaborate on that front i mean uh, how we can uh, take that to our advantage yeah so see alpha is a complex concept for uh, new investors and my assumption is people who are joining in here are not uh, new investors they this would be experts as well so alpha is uh, earning returns uh, better than benchmark which is nifty now uh, the only way to earn returns better than benchmark is uh, not to own the benchmark because if you own the benchmark you will earn returns of the benchmark you have to differentiate and deviate and aim to own that part of the index which um, has uh, better drivers of returns in the next 3 to 5 years or next 10 years those better drivers of returns could come either because the businesses are superior or they are priced uh, in a fair manner or cheap manner so those are the nuances but you know what i mean is uh, where behavior plays a role is um, uh, you know not uh, jumping in the train when the train is already moving very fast Uh, and uh, actually when the train is on the platform uh, completely empty yet to start 3 4 minutes before it starts but it is empty uh, many times uh, you know uh, we don't get in thinking that it is empty hai, but baju wala train bhara hai to let me go in the other train so that is the role of behavior which is not chasing past performance not chasing uh, hot uh, themes or hot stocks or hot funds and first of all asking this question that ye game ka rules kya hai what are the rules of this game if you are playing cricket we all know cricket ke rules kya hai So if you are coming to invest in equities as an asset class via equity funds knowing those rules is important so what can be long term returns like i said 10 to 12% is what i feel in today's regime uh, could be uh, reasonable uh, returns one can expect and not necessarily uh, 15 to 20% which uh, one has seen if you invested in bear market because we are not investing in uh, starting in a bear market we are starting in a bull market so that is where behavior plays a role uh, the second thing is uh, when um, you know see uh, when we communicate that uh, uh, xyz fund has earned 12% uh, cagr returns over the last 25 years it is not 12% every year uh, there are years it has given 150% positive there are years it has given minus 40 so that uh, non linearity is very high uh, human beings panic when uh, returns are negative thinking that now like i said uh, you be- you start be- behaving as if it is now more risky and that is the dimension of behavior when prices are falling uh, in a mutual fund when enemies are falling the risk is coming down good behavior is being aware of that and actually taking advantage of that good behavior is not getting carried away at uh, you know when past performances are very high and not getting scared when past performance is very low so that's one dimension of behavior the second dimension of behavior is different fund houses or schemes have different approaches to you know go to their heaven uh, some uh, portfolio managers would prefer uh, you know uh, companies which are growing extremely fast some portfolio managers will prefer companies which are growing fast but not um, you know uh, very popular some portfolio managers prefer companies which are not popular at all which is would be contrary in investing so there are different routes uh, to you know reach that final destination and all routes don't perform at the same time now many times what investors do and we have observed this in our mutual fund business that and even let's say in, in case of dsp if we have nine equity funds um, and and we see the pattern of what our customers looking for they will come to the website and say show me the best performing funds uh, so a style which is more fashionable right now will have higher returns and investors will prefer to go and invest in that a style which is less popular today maybe having slightly lower returns but maybe no one will invest in that now that is again bad behavior or wrong behavior the right behavior is to blend uh, you know these styles together and uh, you know be patient with them 
and um, uh, you know then um, uh, remain loyal to the manager or to the style or to the product at least for 7 8 years and not keep jumping every 2 or 3 years just because temporarily the fund is not doing well so these are two dimensions of behavior which um, matter in terms of alpha generation the dimension of evidence uh, is is again like i said uh, you know investing on objectivity and data so for example if if someone says that um, that uh, uh, you know in 2007 and 8 uh, there were narratives that india will be the next china for example um, yeah maybe you know that will happen sometime in the next 10 20 30 years but if already the stock prices uh, are reflecting that a uh, future rosy uh, you know picture uh, where stock prices are quoting at 30 times on profits 35 times on profits um, especially in those days it was infrastructure companies with relatively uh, debt heavy balance sheets or poor business models or even poor governance um, everything collapsed a lot of those companies uh, do not exist today or down are down 70 80% now so there was no evidence that um, you know if you buy stock prices at such high valuations mostly the evidence is when you buy something at very high valuations future returns are likely to disappoint you so that's evidence but if you are blind to that evidence because headlines are very different uh, everyone is you know jumping in a uh, new products or uh, you know uh, new nfos and infrastructure funds coming in at that point or in the year 2000 it was with technology i myself have made those mistakes where i have in you know without being aware Uh, you know offered funds with uh, where, where the top stocks had 80 90 times price to earning multiple so the narrative was um, uh, every indian tech company will be the largest company in the world because uh, india's uh, tech talent will rule the world a lot of that, that played out some of our companies became very large uh, tcs became very large infosys became very large wipro became very large but the stock investor did not make money because that 100 p came down to 20 p Uh, we had a mini run of that after covid when again the narrative changed to tech stocks will rule the world next decade belongs to technology companies are digitizing so many tech stocks at 40 50 p became popular because their last one year returns were up 150% so investors jumped in without looking at past history evidence how these you know cycles keep playing out again and again so that's the role of uh, you know looking at data looking objectively where are the odds uh, are the odds favorable or against me and if they are not favorable then don't take that risk it's okay to earn lesser returns in the near term uh, till odds turn in your favor so i think that's the these are the two learnings that i've had of not uh, you know taking making big mistakes at extreme points of the market so what are the few traits uh, we should look for uh, the fund manager uh, i mean while tracking uh, the track record of the fund manager and on the top of that how had been your experience dealing with the fund manager managers in the sense like there are times where uh, the fund managers have enough flexibility and there are organizations where they have set process and the fund manager has to align to their process so i mean uh, would you like to talk around this sir? yeah this is a very long topic or uh, very difficult to explain in few minutes but i'll tell you my own experiences generally i i always say that uh, before i seek a five star fund manager i need to deserve a five star fund manager and that deserving ness comes from am i being a five star investor or not so you know and and thankfully because of being in the industry i i can judge portfolio managers their intent and their skill sets Uh, reasonably well as an industry we are blessed to have uh, you know very good talent whether in dsp or many of our uh, other peers there are competent people and um, you know that shows in their long term track records to start with number one there are many managers with you know 10 15 20 year track record so long term track record is good uh, but they also struggle and go through short term periods of uh, uh, poor track record and that that's when you need to know whether he is sticking to his style or approach or you know ideology and not deserting it because that's a good signal of of a committed fund manager who believes in what uh, he has said and uh, at the same time it's important that he is not dogmatic he is not rigid and you know um, because that rigidity or dog or dogmatism sometimes comes from arrogance as well intellectual arrogance that okay this is the only way and there is no other way of uh, you know life because things change and evolve so i think it is about uh, reading what the fund manager is talking about reading what he is writing there are many managers in today's world who uh, express themselves either in interviews or uh, who write about their investment approach uh, who put it up on their website one big learning i have had after long you know when one of our um, um, you know global investor who was evaluating us um, uh, you know this was like 2016 or 17 when they when we explained to them that you know this is our investment approach this is our belief and uh, this was a old couple and uh, the lady said that 
uh, if it is not written down it doesn't exist because you know you can tell us good english but uh, show me what's your uh, thesis show me how do you do what you do and that's how we at dsp embarked on the journey of putting out our belief system right or wrong you know time will tell but at least we we felt that whatever we believe in let's put it out and let's become more accountable more transparent and uh, you know build a way of life of doing things so i personally like fund managers who have some belief system some guardrails who have broad rules with which they operate um, and uh, you know who uh, are constantly hungry to learn and uh, learn from their mistakes i like money managers who are prudent who are uh generally cautious because uh, they are end of the day managing we are managing other people's money i like fund managers who are not uh, very bullish when past returns have already run up a lot uh, and who who talk only narratives and stories i like managers who who you know guide in terms of risk who are also honest to say that at this point in time these these are the risks that i see in the market and who give you answers uh, with uh, objective data and not just uh, adjectives and uh, only english so i think uh, a good manager is a blend of uh, communicating with honesty uh, uh, you know communicating um, uh, with data and objectivity and not just uh, uh, rosy stories a good fund manager will give you a very balanced perspective in bear markets he will give you probably more uh, aggressive uh, commentary and in super bull markets he will be you know using his brakes and parachute uh, and this is what i have learned over 25 years of you know observing many money managers around me and uh, i have seen them to be um, you know uh, adding lot of value to their portfolios their navs uh, but very few investors end up taking advantage of uh, such managers because when they go through a lean patch um, investors are not loyal to such managers unfortunately uh, at least i can say i have stayed through like I, when i sold my home uh, when when i wanted to buy my home in 20 uh, 21 after that huge covid rally i i said that you know let me apply my own uh, uh, preaching Uh, to my own behavior and uh, i uh, actually redeemed uh, from one of my own fund which was doing the best at that point in time the normal instinct is to you know redeem from what was not doing well um, uh, rather than you know taking money out from what is doing very well because you know that some things you know sometimes stretch to a certain extreme and uh, and then this was a phase when quality stocks were doing extremely well and one of our fund typically focuses on quality and growth as a metric and that fund in the year 2021 had 12% alpha to nifty now long term alpha generally 2 to 3% per annum is a very reasonable long term alpha uh, you know uh, very few fund managers are able to deliver that globally so here annually there was a 12% alpha and i was somewhere feeling that uh, some of these stocks are getting pricey uh, the fund manager believes in that over a long period of time but i i need to get out of the train right now because my stop has come so let me take advantage of the train which reach reach there the fastest so so i like i said um, look for uh, managers who communicate op- openly transparently in a balanced manner who guide you on risk who who write to you about you know what can go wrong uh, who don't give you uh, very rosy outlooks um, uh, all points in time uh, so i think these are some uh, simple uh, crude uh, hacks that i have and i am fortunate because you know being uh, uh, surrounded by all of them you you have very uh intuitive ways of uh, you know taking those decisions i like managers who say that i i am putting my own money uh, in the same fund in which you are investing i like managers who say that you know my family's money is all of course that's not a condition for uh, good outcomes uh, but it is a good uh, you know um, a signal that um, the fund manager also believes in his own portfolio which um, um, you know he's asking his investors to invest in Uh, my next question was on client communication which you already answered sir so we got one speaker uh, let's take uh, her question sure her question please radhika uh, you are on mute uh, maybe some issue so so kalpen sir one comment question is like uh, how much time uh, every active manager will undergo some period of under performance how many years should a retail investor give to the fund manager when under performing before he or she switches to some other fund oh okay so uh, generally if your uh... selection is right mostly i have seen that uh, even the best fund managers uh, you know have a lean patch it is a lean patch of 2 uh, to 3 years uh, 
but not longer than that because uh, if uh, you know it is very rare that uh, because cycles are reasonably short in 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 the last 10 to 12 years i've seen so most styles keep coming back and um, i've not seen good fund managers go through a leaner patch beyond uh, you know 3 years or so number one uh, number two how you measure that year is very important so many times what happens is that let's say the last one year was very bad but because of that you know negative delta of one year two year and three year may start looking bad so it's not that the three year patch was bad it was just that last one year patch which is making your two year three year also look relatively poor so knowing this nuance is very important uh, like like today you know if you look at hdfc bank as a stock uh, three year returns look uh, zero or even you know, or look weak versus many other sectors or even nifty but or or even five year returns may look uh, uh, moderate but it is not uh, all five years that it has done badly maybe it's more in the last 18 months that it has done badly uh, uh, so you know knowing that nuance is num- important um, uh, number one number two you know what i try to do is i broadly know that there are these you know broadly two or three ways of um, uh, approaching investing growth style quality style um, uh, valuation respecting style uh, i have my own belief system Uh, for example having started my career in 2000 in the tech bubble and seeing 88% drop in the nav um, because uh, you know uh, we had overpaid and then in 2007 it again overpaying in uh, uh, in the next bull market of india and then losing 60% uh, my personality or style is uh, not overpaying now which also means you lose out on lot of growth stocks at some points in time so my dominant style or preference is that so i will have a uh, larger uh, weights uh, in my portfolio to a manager who follows that style but i also look at my anti style that who are competent managers who are able to you know invest in quality companies and stay put with them uh, for long periods of time like for example one of our colleagues uh, he picked up uh, bajaj finance in his portfolio let's say in 2012 or so and uh, every two or three years the stock kept on looking expensive and expensive but he had the temperament to you know constantly ask that one question that is the business executing and you know constantly doing well and uh, communicating with better transparency and managing risk well uh, and if all those tick marks were there let me not get out now left to myself my natural style would have forced me to get out of uh, styles like this but i need uh, another manager who you know i allocate let's say 20% of my portfolio to that style so there is diversity so even when one doesn't do well the other train is moving ahead the other style is moving ahead and it does not uh, create panic in me or it does not uh, you know uh, beyond a point bother me so uh, knowing these nuances and you know approaches of uh, three four different managers who you are comfortable with and then uh, building that team of um, uh, these managers and rather than putting everything in one style uh, that is another way in which uh, you can complement your portfolios and um, uh, reduce the anxiety when you know the style in which you are invested in or the manager in which you are invested in he ends up going through a, a leaner patch uh, over time uh, i i have also real again see this uh, uh, may not apply to everyone i am fortunate to have built up a certain corpus so 1% lower return year and there does not change my uh, outcomes so i prefer managers who uh, have a certain belief system of uh, risk management or saying that okay there are certain types of businesses i will not invest in come what may i am happy you know participating with uh, that approach even if temporarily for 2 3 years it may um, uh, go through lean patch so these are my personal choices uh, this is not uh, prescriptive for everyone is listening because uh, you can have different uh, you know time horizons and approaches right please sir so the uh, expert or i just see it uh, right now you know i i just mentioned sometime back that uh there are some you know very uh, veteran investors who have spent 30 40 years some of them more than my age who like subramani was there uh, i just saw his uh, uh, uh you know icon so he has written a very uh, uh, interesting book on how to invest he's written two books so lot of these uh, people have uh, you know monica alan has recently written about uh, mutual funds so rather than you know me guiding how to choose mutual fund in a 10 minute 20 minute session i would urge uh, 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 listeners to read some of these books they will really give you a very simple framework of deciding how to start how to choose funds what should be your behavior what should be your approach it, you, it will go a long way uh, in helping you become a better investor and i think that is something we owe to ourselves to our hard earned money and to our families that you know when we spend so much of time to earn that money we we should spend some time in reading the right literature uh, which is about principles and behavior and not about what we'll do well in the next 3 months or 6 months 
I can reckon with that, sir, and I have Subramani, sir, Vishal, sir, and even uh, Monica, Helen, and ma'am. <laughs> so, so Kalpen, sir, a very pertinent uh, question which comes to my mind is like, just uh, like we uh, discuss selling stocks, right? Likewise, when we should be selling our uh, mutual funds, Go- goal, goal-based uh, investing is one style, but again, uh, what would be your suggestion on that part, sir? So I think one is, as you rightly said, your goal is coming. Uh, you need money. Uh, we should take it out. Nothing matters that time, right? Because, and then I, I'm giving you again my personal example that in 2021, I wanted to buy a house. I had two choices to make. Do I take loan? Uh, broadly, long term, you know that interest rates, yeah, loan rate is 8% and long term equity return is 10 to 12%. Um, maybe uh, taking a loan would have been a wiser decision, but uh, I went by my personality. My personality is a very conservative personality. That, uh, And then this was, again, 2021, where I used the layer of uh, valuations. That valuations were in the highest decile of our uh, history of markets. And generally, my past experience or evidence of base rate says that from this decile, generally the next three to five year returns are very close to bond yields. So if that going, is going to be the case, then let me not take a loan. Let me sell from my funds. So I, uh, you know, leveraged that knowledge of past cycles and past data and uh, redeemed from my funds uh, rather than saying that, you know, investing has to be forever. So I needed money. I wanted to purchase another asset class. I took advantage of an existing asset class, which was, you know, booming and which had uh, for all bad news, the stock prices had actually doubled uh, in that particular one year. And there you broadly knew that a lot of this is happening because of, uh, you know, zero interest rates in the world, a significant amount of uh, pumping of liquidity by central banks. So, uh, you know, in 25 years, you know that these things generally have uh, short term effects and in the long term or medium term, they normalize. So so I think uh, when you need money, you should take it out uh, from your mutual funds or, or from wherever you invested in. Second, when that asset class becomes irrationally priced, uh, you should rebalance. So either you do it uh, independently on your own with your own framework of when to rebalance or you choose funds which do it in an automated manner. Uh, See, another important nuance is every time you rebalance from one uh, fund to another or one asset class to another, uh, there is a profit book, there is capital gains and then there is tax uh, paid. And that tax uh, uh, that you pay today, you are going to lose compounding uh, over the next 10, 20, 30 years. So so again, like I said, In my early years, uh, these things, um, I never used to realize the value of uh, loss of compounding on the tax that you end up paying. You feel nice that, okay, I booked some profits and I switched and I jumped here and there. Uh, Activity illusion makes you feel great. But uh, this game is all about stillness and, uh, you know, postponing, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, tax till the future so that every rupee compounds end of the day. Uh, So I, uh, answering in in, in a nutshell, uh, Take money out when you need money. Take money out when that fund, that style, that asset class is becoming irrationally priced. So when when markets go to 25, 30 times, um, uh, at least past history has shown, generally those are bubbles. Um, take some money out. You know, use it for uh, some consumption or use it for something that you may need. And um, that is how I approach uh, profit booking or uh, taking money out. Right, sir. And and I as I was saying about the client uh, communication, the DSP Netra is indeed a very good read for me and uh, most of the participant. I say it. so. Uh, kudos to your team for writing in great detail. That is really helpful for whosoever reads that. So apart from that, uh, Kalpen sir, what uh, uh, I mean, uh, books you already like uh, mentioned uh, names of few authors uh, like uh, Subramani sir and Monica ma'am. But uh, what other, uh, other uh, literature or uh, uh, stuff you would suggest so as sure. if, if we read and uh, could be uh, to our advantage uh, to make uh, us so- learn <laughs> uh, Netra, for example, uh, is, uh, you know, very powerful communication. I feel very proud about uh, the fact that, you know, me and my team, um, more than me, DSP and my team has, uh, you know, worked on content like this, which is an attempt to be very honest and objective. So there are times... Uh, we don't understand things or we feel something is risky, we uh, flag it off uh, in Netra. But Netra is uh, more uh, for, uh, let's say, a uh, lot of nuance if you want. But even for a lay investor, if you want to learn about which funds do I select or how is you, how are you managing ABC fund, on our website, there are uh, sections called uh, investment frameworks. 
so uh, there are you know five uh, core fund managers that we have and maybe we'll add few more over a period of time uh, we uh, make an attempt to you know uh, tell them to write down their approach of investing and uh, put it out on our website in our uh, document and again i'm not saying because you've written it this gospel's truth or uh, it is the only way to invest or the best way to invest but at least uh, you as a consumer will know what are the few things that you know you should be aware of about investing how is this fund being managed what is its approach so i would urge um, um, you know listeners to read that as well apart from uh, netra as a document uh, and there are many other documents like uh, you know converse transcript uh, annual report nectar sectoral compass uh, that we come up with uh, at various uh, frequency um, uh, so so that is the way we try to make communication more uh, holistic in terms of uh, Uh, reading, uh, of course, um, you know many uh, books are known. Um, but I, uh, I have learned a lot uh, from uh, uh, reading this book called uh, "The Art of Thinking Clearly." Uh, uh, it is a very easy read. See, there are a lot of intellectual books where uh, it needs a lot of application. It, it feels as if you are doing engineering or medicine all over again. Um, so I am not giving you those names like security analysis or uh, Daniel Kahneman. They teach you about behavior and you know. Uh, Of, of prediction and forecasting, but uh, this uh, book by Rolf Dobelli is a very simple way of you know knowing what type of errors we make as human beings in decision making and particularly decision making about uh, investing. Uh, written in very simple language, in you know in in two or three pages, each uh, uh, decision making error is highlighted, and then he gives hacks that how do you try to minimize those errors. He is very honest to say that. most likely we will never be able to become 100% rational investors but if you are able to become less irrational that is a good progress to make so it's important to be honest and uh, be aware of how much we can stretch so so that's one book which i have found to be very useful um uh, uh, for at least my uh, learning um then uh, i've learned i've been very blessed you know twitter as a platform uh, many people can crib about it and you know the type of noise which is there but Uh, there are some uh, brilliant uh, people that i have uh, discovered or learned from uh, uh, you know for example uh, uh, in fact vishal is here so let me take vishal's name you know vishal used to write this blog many years back 2013 is when i read i think first of his article and uh, that again took me into a different journey of uh, you know what what about what are the operating metrics that matter rather than just uh, talking about macro and global gyan and uh, that journey took me to discover uh, you know a lot of writings by professor uh, sanjay bakshi and that journey took me to uh, to a dimension called uh, behavioral uh, you know biases and uh, investing and you know things like that so uh, so that's how uh, you know over time uh, uh, reading some of these uh, 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 responsible bloggers i'm using the word responsible bloggers who write with honesty uh, who write with guardrails uh, who guide about risk Uh, i uh, i personally you know have learned uh, a lot uh, reading uh, there's this uh, unknown handle called uh, contrarian eps i don't know who is he but um, i i i learn from you know uh, his uh, uh, approach of uh, flagging of uh, excesses or uh, uh, risks so i think uh, these are some of the uh, opportunities so today knowledge is uh, freely available there is no shortage of that uh, whether through youtube videos or through books or through uh, experts coming and talking about their uh, opinions and views it is all about uh, us uh, what do we consume and uh, how do we learn who's trying to sell to you something versus who's trying to you know just share with honesty and uh, objectivity and i think that that is a very important dimension so to sir and and uh, the greatest take away from today's session would be that the we should look for optimum returns rather than uh, the best returns because uh, that's what we uh, should uh, have i mean that's what uh, what we say the reasonable expectations are so let's uh, once again call radhika mm-hmm. if she is available so radhika you can unmute and ask your question if any there are uh, two more you know with some uh, disclosure there are two colleagues of mine who uh, i have really learned a lot in the last 5 uh, 6 years young guys um, you know i i am again not trying to sell them to you or uh, sell dsp as a platform to you but i have genuinely learned a lot they were not my colleagues but i started following them i started reading from them i started learning certain concepts of base rates and uh you know valuation uh, one of them is ramnik uh, um, uh, you know he's recently joined dsp but 
uh, I I really learn a lot. Another colleague is uh, Abhishek, who uh, uh, you know sometimes you might find uh, his writing a bit uh, skeptical or cynical. But I, like I said, that when when markets are very uh, uh, exuberant, it's important to you know have that uh, foundation of grounding. Uh, so you know there's a lot that you can learn if you find uh, the right people around you and uh, have an open mind uh, to to learn from all. Great, sir, and uh, thank you so much. Uh, first of all, for agreeing uh, doing this uh, last session was postponed due to match, but again, uh, here we are today. And sir, anything which you had in your mind and wanted to discuss, and I haven't asked in any questions. Uh, I don't think so, Prince. Um, I <laughs> that the fact that we on the last session was a good signal. We've been on a winning streak as a country. And I hope uh, mean reversion doesn't happen. Uh, the momentum continues and uh, the cup is ours. Likewise, sir. Thank you so much, sir. And guys, uh, there were few reports that the voice is not audible. The session is recorded uh, for those. Uh, they can surely listen to the insights after we close uh, the session. And apologies in case you're not able to hear uh, due to Twitter glitch. Thank you so much. And thank you once again, Kalpen, sir. Um, it was uh, a pleasure having you today and great uh, learnings from you. Thank you all of you for uh, spending your evening and thanks, Prince, for having me. All the best. Thanks. Good night. Good night.